More custodies coming your way with the All of Us Terminators. Spiky bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear with you today. It's an exciting weekend. The men in gold are finally here. No longer hanging out on Terra, chilling with the Emperor. They are doing stuff. Oh my gosh, man, the Custodes book was so good. But that video, soon. <laughs> We're going to break it down, tips and tactics, talk about all the new lore in there. Uh, another Battle of Terra. Dun, dun, dun. Spoiler alert. <laughs> all sorts of stuff. Now, this box is really exciting. So, first off, $50. I think you say I'm all of us. I don't know. Half of these words are invented. We'll go with Custode Terminators. $50 box from G-Dub. 73 components. going to come with your bases and everything like that. But the cool thing about it is you can make three different types of units. Of course, you can make the normal Terminators here, which have the option of the Castellan Axe or the Guardian Spear, whichever. And they also have their grenade launchers. You can also make a Vexillus Praetor, not to be confused with the Vexillus. They come with uh, the Wardens as well as the Custodian Guard, the existing kit that we already knew about. The other two, uh, the other kit coming next week, and a Shield Captain in Terminator armor. And remember, when the next box comes out, you'll be able to make the non-Terminator version of this from that box as well, along with a Vexillus that isn't in Terminator armor because there's options for each in the box. So these are really exciting. People are like, oh, we're only getting a couple boxes. But if you think about it, you already got existing stuff. Land Raiders, you know, uh, the Contempt of Dreadnought, Transports, you know, all that stuff out there. These guys, this is three kits. The next box will basically be three kits. The Jet Bikes, three kits. Because you can do the same. Well, actually, there isn't a, it'll be two kits because there isn't a Vexil uh, standard that you could take there. So this is really exciting. Let's open it up. Like I said, $50 US. Going to come with a bunch of sprues here. Lots of options. You're going to get your uh, typical two sprue kind of type deal. 40 mil bases. Nobody, nobody cares about those. And your instruction, your massive instruction pamphlet here. Let's jump into this really quick. So first off, they're going to give you, and there are a couple errors in here. I'll try to spot them out. But always double check your part numbers when you're building these guys, because I noticed just flipping through the pages, I was like, wait, that's not right. Oh, that's not right either. <laughs> Which I'm sure I'm gonna discover as we get to the build part of this video here. So overall, it looks like, again, the computer slices front, left, or front, back, cape is separate, but it's not really separate because there's a little piece right there that you're gonna put the powder on thing here, the hip support, over top of it so you have to actually assemble this together you cannot glue it on separately paint it and glue it on separately it has to go on unfortunately but that's still okay then you've got your arms your arms are all separate shoulder pads are all separate i'm sure maybe there'll be upgrades coming out or you could just you know paint them separate or do whatever you want on the back the misery of quarter which you can pay yeah i would just put it on all the models anyways but it is technically four points uh, to equip it then the cool thing about this kit is that the staff you just Put whichever end on it you want whether it's the custode axe or, or the castellan axe or the spear right there and then finish it all off there's your choice of uh, six different heads i kind of don't like the bear heads in here nobody's like screaming or yelling they're all like old and stoic which i guess kind of fits their character but i really like yelling and screaming <laughs> but you get what you get and then the little furl piece up here with the it's actually got an aquila on the back of it, it goes over top to kind of finish it all off and it's got the top knot piece that goes right on top there. So that's kind of the basic to put the guy together. So that's if you just want a normal uh, custode. That's custode A. So if you want to go with the shield captain, it's going to be also kind of similar. But it's he's going to have different shoulder pads. He can have his spear or axe upright. And... I think he has a different little top knot. So you know, it doesn't look like there's a different top knot right there. And he looks like he has a more ornate WWE Championship belt right there. So that goes into the basics, and then you upgrade it either with the axe or the topper right there. And then it goes into part B, which is going to also be an axe, or you can start to make the Praetor over here. Now, there is one of these pieces, like I said, one of these. Uh, staff numbers does not match up so watch your numbering when you're pulling these guys there's the 
Oh, um, guy right there with the vexillum, and then it gets back to the data sheet section, which we're going to talk about here in a second after we go through all of the cool bits. So here they are. The first sprue here that you can see that vexilla is, or vexillum, is very well detailed. Uh, it isn't that split piece that we saw with the custodian guard that came out so long ago. And then you've got the weapon shafts right here that you can decide which way you want to go with that. The misery quarters, the top knots, the computer sliced uh, fronts looking from the back. And then there's the capes that go on there. And then here is the top pieces that go across there over top of the capes that we just saw. The grenade launchers and the arms that they slot into the boots themselves. And remember, it is a, it is a front and or a back in a front plate, which I don't see them. Oh yeah, there they are. Kind of like Gilliman, kind of like we saw with the Primaris, so nothing really new there. But these are very well detailed. I mean, take a look at it. It isn't going to be as well detailed as some of your resin miniatures from Forge Roll, but that's just the nature of the beast when it comes to that material. Over here, you can see the tops, and that's where the top knot goes into the little eagle. I guess that's the eagle palantine, that's single-headed eagle. And then all of your heads. Your different WWE Championship belts here, depending on who you equip it with. A pointy finger, some more of the hip armor, and grenade launcher, cape. These capes are, so I guess you would use that if you wanted to be more innate, or you go with these that just have the gems. And it doesn't look like you have to glue the Mizzier quarters on there, those are the little combat knives. But you could, if you wanted to. But remember, they are four points each. So that is the sprues. Let's get to clipping and see what we can come up with next. Okay, so a few minutes later, I guess it took about an hour or so, we've got our Vaxillum model right here. The only thing I really don't like about these is the fact that you're going to have to drill out the grenade launchers. And also on the HQ guy here, you're going to have to drill out the barrel on his watcher axe. But other than that, they go together very well. Um, there is the joint, remember, there's going to be a joint between this cape and the front armor plate right here, but it's covered up by the hip plate. So you're not going to have to worry about any split seams or anything like we did, like we saw with uh, the HQ guy here, Valorous, which I'm still waiting for the glue to dry on that. I have to go back and scrape it down a little bit. But, uh, you know, everything locks in here very well. Doubly detailed front and back on that. And from the top down, it's looking great. Very cool. Very, very neat aesthetic for the Praetor here with the Vexella. Remember, if you don't want to take him into Terminator armor, you can uh, field him as the, well, I, I want to say power armor, but I know that's not correct. The other version in the kit that's coming out next week. Here we just see a normal, normal duder, normal Terminator with the Castilla and Axe. Remember, these guys deep strike normally, so you're always going to be able to bring them in nine inches away. Uh, there is, I believe, a stratagem that allows you to reroll. Oh no, I think it's a Warlord trade actually. We'll have to double check on some some uh, tips and tactics here shortly. But I remember thinking there was a way to get these guys to close pretty quick. There's no drawback to putting the axes on here except for the fact that they're only within pistol range with their shots here again need to drill out the barrels on both of these unfortunately slash fortunately whichever uh, you want to say right there but he has looking good nice cool pose lots of dope detail work right here everything splices together very well and last but certainly not least a shield captain you can tell he's in charge because of his WWE championship belt right there pointing off into the distance. Need to drill the barrel out, but we're on a little bit of a time crunch here to get this content done. Again, need to drill that out right there. And here you can see the seam line where the half connects. So you could magnetize these. I would, you need a very tiny magnet. I don't think it would attract enough to make it worthwhile. However, if you didn't need to change them out, you could slice it across there and then down the seam, kind of fillet it and switch it out if you really needed to make some changes on the fly. But this is your shield captain. He isn't quite as good as Valoris at 250, but at, I think 166. How many points is this guy? I've been pointing them up here as we go. With a oh, in terms of armor, he's 160 with the spear. So if you give him uh, the axe, he's going to be two points less, which I feel like it might be better with the axe, but don't say it. I don't know. 
as far as how do these compare to the Forge World ones, well, we just so happen to have a few of those in the studio as well. I've been painting them up as I got ready for this release. Not quite there yet, but you can see how, uh, how good they are looking here on camera. They are on 50 mil bases from Forge World. These guys are on 40s, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. Overall, they are a little bit bigger, but not by much. They're not anything off-putting as the size difference we saw with Ixion Hail and Valorous right there. But these guys uh, definitely could hold their own when compared to each other. Personally, I like the Eagle Cowl right there from all the old artwork back in the day. Uh, they are a bit more detailed as well, and I can't wait to see what their rules are going to be for Warhammer 40k as alluded to from Games Workshop themselves over on Warhammer Community. So overall, I think this is a great kit for 50 bucks. Um, you can field them in squads up to 10, but that's just kind of crazy talk <laughs> money-wise, I suppose. But for value, I think on the fly, you can pick some up and uh, just have some fun because literally we just made three different models out of that kit right there uh overall here's their stats so the custodians are very very pricey uh base price 70. you give them the sphere you're talking 12 more right or 14 more so you know you give them the excuse me 16 more you give them this uh, the axe they're 14 more the misery quarters four more but they do have ages of the emperor so they are in a Battleforge army, you're going to have that 4-up invulnerable save. They are going to be able to make an extra attack with their Mizir Quarter. So they're going to be up to 5 attacks. They are 4, they have 4 attack base, so they'll be up to 5 attacks. Toughness 5, Strength 5, hidden on 2s all day, every day, unless you know some other rule conflicts with that. 4 wound models, 2 up, 4 up, and there is a stratagem you can play to get them down to a 3-up invulnerable if you really need to. There is no way to sneak in a storm shield, unfortunately, but it is what it is. They always deep strike into play if you so decide. And they have the Slayer of Tyrants rule where they can pile in three inches towards the nearest enemy character, even if it's not the closest enemy model, as long as they finish within one inch of an enemy unit. So they can tr try to close the gap and take out some characters in one-on-one -on -one combat. The grenade launcher is pretty good, but it's only 12 inches. Again, same with the axe. Oh, the axe is 24. My mistake. I thought that was a pistol. Well, that's really cool to see. So the axe or the spear, I feel like it's a no-brainer to just go with the axe at that point because you're not getting a penalty to swinging and your strength 8 with a way better damage profile. But there are some stra um, some strategic combos to taking the spears too. So that will definitely give me pause and I'll have to consult the Mighty Mighty Rulebook before I decide how to assemble uh, my other box of these Terminators here. They are in squads of three, up to seven, up to ten, like I said. And it's a, it's a pretty pretty sizable financial you know, investment when they are $50 each, but I don't think you can go wrong with one box and making all of the different type of units there. So overall, I think Games Workshop has another uh, really good release on their hands that while it may not appear to be a lot of models at first, I feel like it's still a really cool, robust release because of all the combo kits and how you can do it all. And it's really neat to see that they're really kind of thinking and not just kind of just shoveling some stuff out the door just to see if it sticks. It looks like they actually put a lot of time and effort into this release and I definitely applaud them for it and uh, the really cool designs and interchangeability of these kits themselves. So that's it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed this type of video here on the channel these new unboxings and build and rules reviews if you like these please work out your hobby muscles subscribe to the channel turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on these videos and make sure you check out spikybits.com for all sorts of dope reviews on all the forge world kits from the custodies as well as everything going forward from games workshop and other tabletop companies out there Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.